What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, there's a lot of things going on. DXY is actually pumping, and the is actually pumping also. So let's go over the charts and let's dig into it. All right guys, welcome back to the channel. Now guys, if you're struggling, come in the Discord. There's a lot of things going on in the market right now. A lot of people are confused about it, especially the war and all this. Honestly, it's kind of annoying when people say the war is gonna affect the market. Guys, no war has affected the market since the beginning of Iraq war, and that was not even really much. The market didn't really do anything. Um, the war with, you know, that's going on, I'm not really gonna talk about what countries are going on, but it's been going on since the 70s, so kind of drop the subject if you guys can, especially in the Discord, because it really does not matter. Now, honestly, in DXY, we honestly been talking about this for a while now. DXY has been building a bottom. It's at the top of the channel now. So, and we actually did break the 50 moving average on uh, DXY also, and then also on the 10 year yield. So this is what I've been talking about uh, a while back, uh, about the past two weeks, is if DXY starts to pump, and then also if you also have the 10 year pumping also, which it broke out of its channel, guys, this can affect the market and actually push it down. Is it gonna affect it over the one minute chart? No. Is it gonna affect the overall market? Yes. If the 10 years actually starts to pump, it's going to push the market down, especially DXY, it's inverted. So if the DXY goes up, 10 year goes up, market goes down, it's like a buffer pretty much, like a like one of those friends just like edging you, you know, to the left or the right, just pushing you. So just want to kind of wanted to go over that. If we actually do break above this support right here around 4.25%, you will run up to around 4.5, about 4.6%. And that's actually going to help the market a lot, rejecting. Um, that jump today in the market in DXY and the 10 year yield actually did give a little nice sell off to uh, the NAS. Let's actually zoom in a little bit closer. Um, we are on the 20 moving average on the triple Qs and uh, I think the SP500 also and the NAS right here. So definitely pay attention to the 20 moving average. Um, you do have major support around 19,369. So just throwing that out there. And then also on the SP500, pay attention to the 20 moving average on, on this also. We do have support around 5,720. And then also around the 50 moving average, we do have support around, around 5,585. But main support is going to be around down to this level right here. And then also on the triple Qs, we have been hovering for a while now. So just remember, we usually trade sideways and then we make a move. And then we trade sideways, we make a move. We trade sideways and we make a move. So just pointing that out, it's coming to an end probably on trading sideways. So keep an eye out on for that. Um, um, just be very careful with this upcoming week because this is probably going to be the market mover week or the next week early. So, but let's go over the uh, charts real quick on SPY also. SPY is also on the 20 moving average. If we can break that, um, definitely pay attention to that. Remember, make sure you guys are Googling what's in these indexes. SPY is number one, or uh, Apple is number one in SPY. So whatever Apple is going to do, SPY is going to do. So just throwing that out there if you are confused about indexes, but you also have uh, Apple finally on the 50 moving average. It did get that rejection and drop past the 50 and it is below the 50. So just throwing that out there, Apple can start making a reject. It's like a domino effect. Apple's 8.4% of the market in the triple Qs. Um, it's number one in SPY. I mean, it's part of the NAS, it's part of the SP 500. So if a domino effect, if you start to see Apple take a dive to support around 209, like last time when I was calling this out, guys, we saw what happened in the triple Qs, went down to around 430-ish around there. So just pointing that out, that, you know, that out. And then also Tesla's on the 20 moving average. There's a lot of things on the 20 moving average and 15 moving average. And just be very careful because if Apple keeps on dropping, it's going to force Tesla down to its 15 moving average, around 224. So just throwing that out there. Um, and then also, if we start to reject a little bit lower on Apple, we could start breaking the 15 minute average on a lot of these other uh, you know, tech companies. You guys, just remember, the Mega 7 is what controls the market. It controls 52% of the market. That's not the entire market, but seven stocks control 52% of the market. Now, if you want to be those, well, that's not a lot. 
try to guess how many stocks control the other 48 percent it's more than seven stocks you're talking about hundreds okay so if you got seven stocks controlling the market it's going to push those smaller cap companies down um and then also on amd amd is actually making a little bit of a push it's probably going to probably stop around here it is doing a false breakout so just throwing that out there if you are in amd um if you bought calls or something um good job you got lucky but if the other ones start to drop it's going to affect amd so we do have support around 157 if we start to break that definitely 149 and then the lower end of 115 and then also on meta meta is finally actually getting that rejection off the top of the channel um let's actually pull that up um so if meta actually starts to break down it's going to help push apple down it's going to help push microsoft down um if it starts to push those down and then the apple starts to break its 50 and 20 moving average it's going to start a, a domino effect and you'll start to see meta break its 50 and 20 moving average and probably make its way down to 474 is it going to happen within a week no is it going to happen probably faster than we rally yes so throwing that out there and then also on um amazon amazon is breaking that 20 million average finally so just throwing that out there there's a lot of things breaking its 20 million average so be very very careful guys and then also especially this right here actually i'm gonna point this out um we did get a false breakout at this time right here and now we're finally making that rejection it's on the 50 million average if apple starts to drop or microsoft is going to push amazon and start the domino effect and then also um let's talk about microsoft because microsoft is actually the one that's starting the show like i said um apple uh, microsoft is actually getting that rejection off the top of the channel it broke its 50 and the 20 minute average if it keeps on dropping it does have support around 375 and that's going to help push a lot of these a lot of these stocks and a lot of these indexes down past its 20 50 minute average so just throwing that out there if you're part of that uh you know show if you're trying to figure it out so just be very careful um if we do actually do break that support definitely pay attention to the buying pressure zone of around like you know price action um definitely pay attention around 380 around 379 and then also on google google is finally down on its 50 moment average so just be very careful if it does break it's probably going to be because of apple and them they push it especially microsoft and you will make it into the lower ends of 137 and then also on nvda nvda did have a little bit of a push uh and then it actually rejected off of this top of the channel right here so just be very careful guys um there's a lot of things going on in the market right now um especially nvda if nvda starts to reject apple starts to reject microsoft starts to keep on pushing they're going to break these 50 and 20 moon averages and you'll probably test the lower ends of around 95. but let's ask the question right what would the triple q's be if these start to reject to just say support right well let's just go back to history let's look at this drop right here when we were at this high it was uh july 12th and then uh august 7th so let's go back to and it's pretty much on a lot of the like same thing on a lot of these so let's actually go back and look at july 7th uh july 7th 17th around right here and then they all all the stocks and the mega seven rejected to their supports look at the difference 500 in the triple q's down to 430 that quickly now remember we drop harder than we rally so when people say go with the trend go with the trend guys if you're going with the trend um it's it can be risky if you don't know when to get out because if this trend that everyone's talking about trading with the trend if that starts to break and you're in calls you're talking about hard drops that's going to trap you so just remember if we're trading sideways something like this definitely take a step uh, step back um, my biggest advice to traders especially people trying to learn how to trade is don't trade in the middle of the trend don't do that like trade at uh, resistance and support that's where we bounce in between now if you're trading and day trading you know constantly in between these trend channels dude you're, you're you're straight gambling that's what you are you might as well go to the casino play roulette do 50 50 on red or black you'll have a better ratio at winning if you want to you know gamble your savings so just throwing that out there but guys if you're struggling learning how to trade guys just come in the discord i talk about this every single day on how to understand the market if you're not understanding it just really just come in and just send me a dm honestly it's not that hard and then also on bitcoin um same thing with bitcoin remember bitcoin follows the market guys 
Um, it's not that hard. We've been trading sideways in the market for a while. We've been trading sideways in Bitcoin for a while. Um, if the Mega 7 does start to reject, you're probably going to start to see the lower end of around 56,000 or around 52,000. Um, the safe uh, top zone is around 66,000. We are pretty high right here. So, I mean, we are almost at resistance with Bitcoin. So, I mean, like I said, trading, you know, not financial advice, but I wait for the support or resistance. I never trade in between the channel. And then also on the 10 year yield, let's just go back and talk about it really quick. Um, we actually did break out of its channel. Now the main resistance for this 10 year yield is going to be around this level right here. So definitely pay attention around 4.2% or 4.23%. But if we break that, it's definitely gonna go higher. Now if we break 4.6%, be watch out. Um, same thing with the XY. Um, if you got 10 year breaking out, hopefully it's not a false breakout. You never know yet. It's still early in the game. Um, VIX did have a really high spike today. So if we do break around, around say 103, if we break that, you're definitely gonna test the top end of around 107. And then also on the VIX, VIX is starting that new channel I've been talking about for a while now. Um, um, it did have a nice push today, actually. It is kind of above, the, well, actually, I think we could probably start the channel now. So let's actually start it really quick. Let's actually pop this off really quick. Pop that off. Let's actually start right before that. Let's see if I can get it on the low end. That that really big spike is kind of messing up. Let's get it right there. There we go. I guess we can work with that a little bit. Nah. Yeah, let's start with that right here. So if we actually do push up a little bit higher, um, we do have resistance around, around 25.6. So if you are going to push in the VIX a little bit more, um, you are on to the top end. I definitely wouldn't really gamble in the VIX anymore. If you are trying to, you know, buy calls or supports or puts in the VIX, I mean, puts would probably be good, but not financial wise, but um, calls in VIX, you really did get a strong push the last couple of week or weeks. I guess it was over two. Yeah, it was over the 26. So yeah, two weeks. Um, just be very careful. It is holding above the 50 moving average. Um, if you start to see a really big spike again, um, definitely go to the calls and puts because the calls and puts are going to tell you a lot. Now, I talked about this in my previous videos. If you see a record of puts coming in like this, the market is going to trade sideways. It's going to wait you out. So that's gonna be your biggest downfall for the bears, um, for the calls and for bulls. You know that can be a downfall because we'll trade sideways in the market but yeah um i just kind of wanted to go over a few things and let you guys know what's going on but if you guys are struggling guys come in the discord guys we have cheap membership it's not that expensive i mean if you want to gamble and lose a couple thousand dollars and learn how to trade that's on you if you want to pay someone to learn how to trade and you know try to get the market faster um membership is way cheaper than losing thousands of dollars that's literally how I had to learn how to trade. I probably lost probably 80K over 12 years learning how to trade. So if you guys want to come in, the link in the Discord is in the comments of the video or in the description of the video. But not financial advice. See you guys later. Don't drink and drive. And guys, if you haven't, we are knocking it out, guys. If you guys want to come join this, literally, it's that easy. I mean, we were hitting it left and right all last week. So if you want to come in and join the membership, we are doing half price on membership right now. So if you want to come in and join us, the link is in the description or in the comments of the video.